Hi, this is Anil from Learning Lad Education and welcome to another tutorial on Java programming language. In the previous tutorials, we have learned about the classes and objects in the Java programming language. I have explained about, you know, what is a class, what is an object, how to create a class, how to create an object from a class with example. So uh, in this tutorial, we're going to learn some more things about the classes and objects. And if you guys haven't watched my previous tutorial on uh, classes and objects, I highly recommend you guys to watch that tutorial first and then uh, you guys can come back to this tutorial and learn more things. So uh, here for the demonstration purpose, what I have done is, you know, I have created two classes inside my oops package. One is a uh, tutorials class and another one is a student class. So uh, we already know you know how to create the classes in our program. So here inside the student class, the first thing that uh, we're going to do is, you know, we're going to create some properties. So first we're going to create a public property and uh, it's going to be of type string type and let me call it as name. So another thing that I want you guys to teach you is about the access modifiers. Here I'm using the public access modifier. When you use the public access modifier, then it means that this property can be accessed inside this Java program. And uh, in a Java program, we can have several packages. You guys can see here we have this oops package and similar to this oops package, we can have several packages and inside that packages, we're going to have several classes. So if your property is going to be of public type or if you use the public access modifier, then you can access this property in all that classes which are defined in all the packages inside this Java program. And another thing is you can skip this modifier part, which is nothing but you don't need to specify any access modifier here. If you don't specify any access modifier, then the property that you're going to create can only be available or accessible inside the package where you have created your class. Here I have created this class inside the oops package and if I have a property with no access modifier then that property will only available inside this oops package and uh, inside all the classes which are defined inside this oops package. So I can't access this property outside this oops package. I'm gonna make a specific tutorial on this one and I'm gonna explain more about that but here you know we can create the properties without specifying the access modifier so i'm going to create another property for example let's say roll number which is going to be of integer type and also we're going to remove the public access modifier of this name property because you know we're going to be using only one package here so we don't need to access you know these properties outside this oops package and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create another property and it is also going to be of integer type and let me call it as h. All right. Now our student class has three properties. One is name, which is of string type. And then we have two integer types. One is called roll number. Another one is called h. The next thing that we're going to do is, you know, we're going to create a method in our program. So to create a method, first we need to write the modifier part. And uh, here, as I told you before in a previous tutorial, I have explained you guys, you know, while creating the method, first we have to specify, you know, where that method is accessible. For example, uh, we have used the public keyword, which means that, you know, we can access this method from an object of this class in any other class. So uh, let me create a method. It's going to be of Y type and let me call it as introduce. And this introduced method is not going to take any parameters and also it's not going to return any values. And that's why, you know, I have used this white type. So as I told you for this class properties, you know, I can remove this public part here. So I can write void introduce. So uh, inside this method, what we're going to do is, you know, we can access this name, roll number and uh, age properties. So I'm going to use the print line statement. It's going to be system dot out dot print line. And here we're going to say, uh, my name is then uh, we're gonna append uh, name so it's gonna be so it's gonna be name i was gonna write my name there okay then we're gonna copy this uh, print line statement and we're gonna paste it two more times 
okay and then uh, you're gonna say uh, my roll number is then uh, let's append roll number property and then uh, let's make use of our age property so it's gonna be my age is then we're gonna append the age all right now uh, here we have created a class with the three properties then we have created a method which is gonna uh, access these properties another thing that i want you guys to do is in a class if you create a method it's not necessary that uh, the method you are creating is going to use the class properties you can create a method which doesn't use the class properties at all it's valid and here now this class student is going to act as a blueprint from which we can create the objects so uh, if we create an object for example let me say uh, student anil equal to new student you know this is how we create the objects in java then you know this uh, name roll number and age properties are going to contain the default data so here if i initialize this class properties for example let me say name is going to contain no name and then uh, let's say this roll number is going to contain zero and then uh, this age is going to contain a value of zero so now whenever we create the objects from this class student you know the properties of that object are going to contain these values what i mean by that is here if i save this program and if i call the introduce method from this anil object then you know since we have initialized these properties here inside this class you know these values will be stored in that properties so i'm gonna run this now you guys can see here my name is no name my roll number is zero and my age is zero so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize our object properties so i'm gonna use the object name which is anil then we're gonna use the dot operator and then we're gonna initialize this um properties first we're gonna set the value for this name so it's gonna be anil dot name equal to and let me assign it as anil city that's my name and then uh, we're gonna initialize our, our roll number property roll number that's gonna be one my roll number and then uh, we're gonna initialize my age property so it's gonna be anil dot age equal to 24 all right now if we run this program you guys can see here my name is anil shetty and then uh, my roll number is one and then my age is 24 i spelled this uh, name wrong so it doesn't matter you know which is inside this uh, print line statement so i can uh, change that one and now uh, you guys can see here the main thing is you know here by default when we create the object you know that objects properties are going to contain these initial values which we have initialized and when we change that values then you know that change are going to be saved so here i'm going to create another object and uh, let me call it as student and uh, let's say uh, andy equal to new student now you know this andy objects name property is going to contain no name and roll number is going to contain uh, zero and age is going to contain uh, zero so i'm just going to call uh, the introduce method from the andy object so it's going to be andy dot introduce and now if i run this you guys can see here uh my name is anil shetty then my roll number is one my age is 24 this is from this anil object and then from this andy object we get my name is no name my roll number is zero and my age is zero so here what i want to teach you guys is that you know if you initialize the class properties while uh, defining your class at that time the objects you're going to create from that class are going to contain that initial values 
another thing that i want you guys to teach you in this tutorial is you know i have explained you in some other tutorial which is nothing but the methods that we're gonna create in uh, our classes can take parameters and they can uh, return values so here for this student class we can create a method which is gonna take some parameters so uh, let me create a method let's say our method is gonna take uh, two values you know initial value then the end value and it's gonna say the numbers from that initial value to the end value so i'm gonna call my method as say numbers and then uh, our this say numbers method is gonna take two parameters and it's not gonna return any values so here these two parameters are gonna be of integer type so i'm gonna say my first parameter is gonna be start and then uh, i'm gonna say my another parameter is gonna be end so here another thing that i want you guys to teach you is you know the methods that we're gonna create in our classes can have the local variables so here you can have a counter variable and uh, um, we're gonna use a for loop and print out the numbers from start to end so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use the for loop and i'm gonna initialize my counter variable with the value of start and then we're gonna check counter less than or equal to end and then we're gonna increment the value of the counter and then we're just gonna use the print line statement so it's gonna be system dot out dot print line and here we're just gonna print out the value which will be in our counter variable so now this same numbers method is gonna take uh, two parameters and it's gonna do something so i can call this say numbers method from this anil object or from this andy object i'm just gonna call this one from my uh, anil object and i'm gonna write anil dot say numbers and i want you to say numbers from uh, two to let's say uh, 10 so I'm just gonna pass two parameters and also before running this program I'm just gonna come in this and this part you know we don't need it anymore just for the demonstration purpose I use that one and then uh, I'm just gonna run this program now you guys can see here you know my name is Anil Shetty my roll number is 1 and my age is 24 which is from this introduce method and then you know our say numbers method you know i printed out the values two three four five six seven eight nine ten you know the values from two to ten just wanted to show you guys you know we can pass parameters to the methods another thing or the last thing that i want you guys to teach you in this tutorial is gonna be you know we can return the values from the methods so here uh, i'm gonna create another method in my uh, student class which is gonna return some value so we need to specify the return type let's say our method is gonna return whether the student has a girlfriend or not so uh, it's gonna return let's say boolean value and here we're just gonna write the type as boolean and then we need to give our method name and uh, let's say has girlfriend or you know okay has girlfriend and it's not gonna take any parameter and here we're gonna return um, a boolean value so let's say every student has a girlfriend you know let's assume that one and we're gonna return true and uh, now i can call this has girlfriend meta from the objects that we're gonna create from this student class so uh, here after calling the introduce and uh, say numbers method we're gonna create a boolean variable and let me call it as gf we stand for girlfriend equal to so i'm gonna check whether anil has a girlfriend or not so i'm gonna write anil dot has girlfriend you know i'm gonna call this has girlfriend method you know which is gonna return a value of true which we have specified here and that true will be stored in this gf variable so uh, here i'm gonna use a if statement if gf then uh, i'm just gonna say uh, using the print line statement that you know anil has girlfriend and else we're just gonna say anil don't have a girlfriend 
so i'm just gonna copy this and paste it here and we're gonna say no girlfriend so uh, i'm gonna run this program now and uh you guys can see here anil has girlfriend so what happened here is you know we have called this has girlfriend method on this anil object and we have stored that return value in this gf variable so here if you want you can call this method directly inside this if so we don't need to create this gf variable which is not needed so i'm just gonna cut this one and i'm gonna paste it here instead of this gf and i'm gonna remove the semicolon you know it's gonna work just like the way it was working before so i'm gonna run this and you guys can see here anil has girlfriend so the main purpose of this tutorial is to teach you guys about you know we can create the methods which can take parameters in classes and uh, the methods that we're gonna create in our classes can have the local variables and also we can return some values from the methods so this is it guys thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel you guys can uh, like my facebook page at facebook.com slash learning lad and also you guys can get the source code of this tutorial in my website learninglab.com and i'll see you in the next tutorial